Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comers there unto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have uh, had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Now these are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying to his Father, A body hast thou prepared me. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ had to took, take upon himself a body, but in that body he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man, be crucified upon the cross of Calvary. And he's the one who died on the cross. Uh, I'm sure you know the message, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. He's the one who wants to save your soul tonight. Now, I'm here to tell you that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, this is very obvious. You know, if if you're saying you're not a sinner, there's something wrong. Because let God be true, but every man a liar. So, you know, you and I have to realize that we're sinners in the sight of the Lord. We've done things wrong in the sight of the Lord. We've broken the commandments of the Lord. And therefore, we deserve hell and the lake of fire for all of eternity. But God, in his love, sent the Lord Jesus Christ down from heaven's glory. And he took upon himself a body. As I said, that in that body, he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. And so the Lord Jesus Christ, we know that the Old Testament sacrifices in the Old Testament, now they were there to point people to the Lord Jesus Christ. They were just pointing people to the Lord Jesus Christ, the only saviour for us poor sinners. When we're born in this world, we're born as sinners. Now God was not happy with that, so he wants to forgive us of all of our sins. Now how can he forgive us? Only through the once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross. And so if you put your faith in Christ, your soul can be saved. But if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour, He will be your judge. Now, why go down to hell when there's absolutely no need? God has made the provision for your salvation and mine that we would be in heaven. And so we see here that it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin... Thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Above, when he um, said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified, or set apart, through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Once for all, in in stark contrast to the many sacrifices, animal sacrifices, that had to take place in Old Testament time. So we need to understand, for by one offering hath he perfected forever them that are sanctified, those that are set apart. So if you want to have forgiveness for your sins, you'll have to come to Christ. You'll have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and as the Bible says, and thou shalt be saved. Um, Yeah, by the which will we are sanctified for the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth um, daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. 
And so you and I can receive forgiveness for our sins if we'll come to the Lord Jesus Christ. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified, or those that are set apart. Uh, whereof the Holy Spirit also is a witness to us for after that he had said before this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days saith the Lord I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more now where remission of these is there is no more offering for sin Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, and again this is written to Christians, to uh, Jewish believers, those who have been born again into God's family through faith in Christ, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Let us consider one another uh, to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore a punishment suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. Hey, Jesus already saved Moses, so that's already over. It's about Jesus and his son by us. They've already been saved, that's what Jesus came. It's about the other stuff. Anyway, I've got to love you, love your work. You know something to read? Yeah. The way of salvation. Through, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you not hear what I said? Sorry? From the Lord Jesus Christ. I just said. Yeah. That he's already saved them. Saved who? Moses and everyone that believes in Abraham and everything from there. It's called the half a shout. I've never heard of it. Yeah. I know you haven't. So, yeah. Anyway. We've got to be saved by Jesus Christ. We've got to I come to that. Christ. I know yeah. I know that. Okay. That's good. You get that? I'm Michael. You get that? Michael? Yes. The archangel? No, the human being. The mole. The moldy. Oh, your, your name's Michael. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, yeah. My name's Dave, anyway. Nice to meet you. Hey, David. Sorry? Yeah, it's my ass. Like, do you not understand? Like, I haven't read the Bible much. Yeah. Like, God talks to me. And you already know that. Why are you going on about it? Like, Jesus doesn't scream in anyone's ears. He doesn't make more temples. You just have a good time. Come down and kick with us. Turn that off with The Lord Jesus Christ said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's what I'm doing. No, come on. No, I've got to let these people know. Yeah, of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall uh, he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified or set apart an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, said the Lord. And again the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But call to remembrance the former days in which, after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions, partly whilst ye were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst ye uh, became companions of them that were so used. For ye had compassion on me and my bonds, uh, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. 
knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away therefore your confidence which hath great uh, recompense of reward, for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while and he that shall come will come, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, and will not tarry. Now the just uh, shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. You see, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So we need to understand that today, if you will hear his voice, that is the voice of God, harden not your heart. You need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. You need to believe upon him. You need to receive him as your saviour. Otherwise, he'll be your judge. Now I want to um, go now into Hebrews chapter 11. This is actually God's definition of faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness uh, that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. In other words, impossible to please God without faith. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, you know, that he really exists, that he's out there, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I wonder, are you seeking the Lord tonight? You need to seek the Lord. The Bible says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. But he will abundantly pardon. See, the Lord Jesus Christ is able to forgive you of all of your sins. But if you don't come to the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't believe on him, you don't receive him, well, you can't have that everlasting life that he's so willing to give to all that will call upon his name. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. You see, we need to understand that the, the, it had never rained before upon the earth. And yet God had said to, to uh, Noah, look, go and preach to the, to the people that there's going to be rain upon the earth, there's going to be a worldwide flood. But of course they didn't believe. And one of the reasons I believe they didn't believe is because it never ever rained before. We can sort of understand it because we know it's rained. We've been in the midst of rain, maybe heavy heavy rain or hail or whatever. But those people, don't forget, it had never rained before. But they that doesn't give them an excuse. I'm not saying they're without excuse. Excuse, I'm just saying they should have responded because it was the message from God. Now God was using a man like he does. He uses preachers of the gospel to bring the message of salvation to people because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why we as gospel preachers preach about the Lord Jesus Christ unto the people because he's the only way of salvation. Now, I'm not here to waste my time or yours. I'm here to tell you the truth. And the truth is this. We are heading down to hell by default but God does not want that for you. And this is why the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and for me. Now these people in Noah's day, they rejected the, the testimony of Noah. They didn't believe that God was going to judge the earth, the whole worldwide flood, with a flood. They didn't believe Noah, but he was telling the truth. And it happened, the whole world was wiped out in a worldwide flood in Noah's day, 
because God was fed up with the wickedness of man was great in the earth and God was absolutely sick and tired of it so he said I'm going to destroy man from the face of the earth whom I have created because it was so wicked because people were doing terrible things upon the earth and of course we have that even in uh, the days that we live of course it's very wicked but we need to understand that God does not want to, want to judge you but he will if you die without Jesus Christ we're here to tell you tonight we're here because we're concerned about your soul we have a love for your soul my friend God does not want you to perish in that terrible place called hell and the lake of fire for all of eternity and I'm here to warn you to flee from the wrath which is to come God is angry with the wicked every day and yet there's no need to remain under the judgment of God see if we die without the Lord Jesus Christ we will be in hell we can't make it any plainer I don't want to water the gospel down we are headed for the judgment of God by default but God does not want that for you he wants you to be saved he wants you to come to Christ my friend he wants you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ so you can be in heaven by faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet as I've said moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house so all those who came inside the ark were saved all the rest that were out the majority of people the multitudes of people upon the earth they perished why because they did not take heed to what God was saying through Noah Noah was a preacher of righteousness same as I'm seeking to be a preacher of righteousness to bring you to Christ that you might understand there's only salvation found in the Lord Jesus Christ he that hath the Son hath life he that hath not the Son of God hath not life the question is do you have the Son of God have you believed on him for your eternal salvation by faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance obeyed and he went out not knowing whither or where he went by faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob the heirs of him of the same promise for he looked for a city which hath foundations Uh, whose builder and maker is God through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised now we'll leave the reading there but the point is this these people they believed God that's what faith is it's taking God at his word just simply believing what God says so by faith we've got to accept the fact that yes I'm a sinner and I'm headed for hell but God does not want that he's provided the way of escape through his son the Lord Jesus Christ dying on the cross and being the once for all sacrifice upon the cross for your sins and for mine so what we need to do is come to Christ we need to come in repentance toward God that is a change of mind simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved that's what God wants for each and every one of us he doesn't want to have to judge us but he will if we die without Christ as our saviour he will be our judge the Lord Jesus Christ is willing and able to save your soul tonight why do we need salvation because we're sinners when we're born into this world in other words we've done things wrong in the sight of God we've broken the commandments of the Lord therefore we're going down to hell by default that's the destination for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord what will you do then with Jesus which is called the Christ he'll either be your saviour or he'll have to be your judge make a wise choice tonight get right with God come in repentance acknowledge that you're a sinner before God and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ well thanks for listening and uh, God bless you and if you're interested in this look me up youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ Hey, how are you? Good. I was just wondering, um, was this, uh, the, your sound interfering with the movies? I was just wondering if, how long much you were going to be here. I've finished. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I just signed off. Yeah. Do you want yeah. something to read anyway? Yeah. Thank Have you. a good night. Yeah, no worries.
Oh, <laughs> 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 